it was the closest finish in NASCAR Cup Series racing history. Let's remind everybody how it happened. Green, white, checker. This is coming to the checker. Larson climbs the banking. He gets to the outside of the 17. They beat and bang coming to the line. Truly an amazing finish. Oh, it was. It won for the ages here. And, and really to look at it, none of us knew who won at this point. I was, it was chaos in trying to sort it out. And a challenge for NASCAR as well. Challenge for NASCAR. Our friends at Fox did a nice job giving the fan basically this view right here. So this is uh, a start finish line view on their camera. You can see both cars almost there exactly the same. I would say it's clear to me the fives there earlier, but I will also say there's a group of fans that are unhappy with how the start finish line looks and they should be. The paint job is not very well done. It's obviously uh, very zigzagged and almost thicker up here on the track than it is down on the apron. It is, it is. And this is where we've gotten to with racing. We've had a couple of races this year decided by what? One, two, three thousandths of a second. Now we're getting to the point we've got to scrutinize the edge of the line. Yeah, and as racing gets tighter, everybody's going to have to be held more accountable, even the poor guy that maintains and repainting the line after the burnouts. But this isn't the look that NASCAR uses. This, I think, is the conversation. So post-event, NASCAR on multiple handles, even Ben Kennedy, sent this photo out. So let's explain what we're looking at, how NASCAR uses it. What you're looking at is a line scan photo. It sounds very fancy, it, right? It is, and, and it really you should dig into this and look into line scan uh, photos because it's it's a different technology and it's not this isn't a picture this is kind of put together it's interesting so nascar has determined that the loops and the transponders will be used to score the field for basically the entire race the moment in time when it won't be used is any time points are paid what that means is the top 10 finish at each stage and the overall finish of the race so therefore at the start finish line and at pit out they have these high speed still cameras that create the photo you see here using that line scan te photo technology. They also have duplicate cameras. They depend on these mm -hmm. so much that there's multiple ones. So what we're looking at here is an instantaneous photo created the moment that the five car touches the start finish line. At that point, it timestamps it. And then you're looking at multiple slices of many photos that all get put together to give you an overall look. And then as a point of reference, the red line is dropped in, that's the tip of the five splitter. The black line is the tip of the 17 splitter. At that moment in time, Kyle Larson is leading the 17 of Chris Busher. How'd I do? Is that overall basically done. what it is? Very well done, very well done. And in part of the piece, when you say you put all these slices together to make the picture, that's why the background is, is kind of blurred here because the picture is taking anything that's moving. Right. So the wall, the line, the racetrack, they're not moving. Those slices kind of get blurred together, but this defines where the cars are. And this is the same technology used across many different sporting events. I think that's a point worth clarifying. This isn't a NASCAR thing. IndyCar uses it, NASCAR uses it, the Kentucky Derby uses it, the Olympics use it. Really anything that tries to determine the winner at a finish line uses this type of technology. Actually, Kyle Larson had a little fun on Twitter. I really appreciate that. He posted his picture next to the finish of the Kentucky Derby. Uh, you should check it out. He posted it, had some fun with it. So Kyle Larson, posted this picture on his Twitter account. And first of all, I love that he's, you know, hold my beer. That's a great kind of like, <laughs> whatever you can do, we can do better. You're doing it at 35 miles an hour. We're gonna do it at 175 miles an hour. What I wanna point out is the imaging. Now the imaging of the horse is a little bit clearer. It's the daytime photo. They're moving a little bit slower overall relative to the race cars. But the thing that's consistent is everything other than the moving objects are blurred. And that is this technology. That's this technology because it's not a picture. It's, a, it's kind of a compilation of several images of a line that come together. So like we said before, dig into line scan technology and, and where that is. It's interesting of the moving parts here and just how finite they can become. This technology is used anytime that the transponder says, hey, this battle's really, really close. You should go back and confirm it by camera. We talk about the transponders. Yeah, let's get into that. That's, that's a piece that, you know, when you look at it, the transponder is, it's a kind of, a, it's a radio piece that... It looks like an old pager, let's be honest. Yes, it does. It looks like a pager you it used does. to wear on your belt. It bolts on to this yellow piece right here. That's the bracket that holds it. It comes on, has a little clip into we it. We put this up here because this is basically the blueprint of the next-gen car. You don't get to put it wherever you want. It's, it's specifically designed. Everybody puts it in the same spot on the cup car. These four locations, that's where the rear tire suspension bolts on. And really that's where the rear tire is. So that transponder is just behind the left rear tire. That's tied to a receiving point in the racetrack that's set back from the start finish line. Yeah, so look, 
So basically the transponder is somewhere in here, right behind the rear tire. Why does that matter? Well, let's take you on to the actual racetrack itself. Let's use Kansas. This is an overhead shot. You see the start finish line, the one, the 20. Well, you're going to see these look, cuts in the asphalt. These two cuts right here, and I'm not going to put it right on top of them. I'm going to go outside of them so that you can kind of see it. But that's a radio antenna. There's a cable built into it, into the racetrack, that when that transponder comes over, it picks up the signal on a transponder. When that transponder signal is at its highest free, you know, density there, yep. that's when it says it's at that point. So that's kind of how NASCAR's done this. They say, as we talked about it, this is good to like, Plus or minus one and a half thousandths of a second. Yeah, it's a very finite piece. But when we get to the finishes we've had, this doesn't carry through to the, what we need. And why this matters is a couple things. So NASCAR has determined when we're going to use loops, and that is all race long yep. until we pay points, which is the finish of the stages or the finish of the race. We will go back to the high speed camera. So anyone who kind of watched the race and questioned what happened, we saw the 17 of Chris Buescher's team basically celebrating. That's because the electronics, the loops, put him in front of Kyle Larson when they crossed the line. After talking to NASCAR, after talking about the plus or minus margins that's available within that technology, I can see how it happened. Now it's unfortunate because think of that emotional roller coaster. They thought they won the race. The five even told Kyle Larson we lost the race. Mm -hmm. But then shortly after, and really short, about say a minute or less, NASCAR tells Kyle Larson, you are the winner. The 17 isn't, and that's no, that's basically the difference between the electronic timing and scoring and the camera itself. That's really the point of this whole conversation is the official, just like in the Kentucky Derby, just like in the Olympics, the official is the slow motion high speed camera. Yeah, that's the defined point that gets the most resolution for them. The transponder helps them sort things out, but when you get within a foot or so, they have to go back to that camera to get true definition of it. And this happens everywhere, right? So we're talking like next week at Darlington, we took a look as well. Uh, you see the loops are a little bit harder to see because there's a whole group of them. Now I will say, I love the Darlington, you know, the nice dark asphalt with the, this very clear yellow line on there, I think will help the fans hopefully see another uh, finish. Remember this had the closest finish, that old battle between uh, Kurt Busch and Ricky Craven until it was just Trump last weekend. From, from that standpoint, the fans still see the start finish line, but when we're measuring to these levels of, of accuracy, there has to be something digital. So, you know, that wasn't enough for me. So I asked myself, well, what happens if we have a tie? Can we have a tie? Because in horse racing, you can have a dead heat. You can have a tie. So we went to the rule books. Shockingly enough, I'm There's have, a procedure for it. Yeah, there is. So basically, if two or more vehicles have the same finishing position, which means that even using that camera, we cannot determine who's in front of one another. Basically, it's whoever leads the most number of laps in the race. If that's the same number, then it's who ran the most number of laps in second, second or in third. third so fourth. I can assure the fan watching that no matter if we get to 0 0.000000, there will be a finisher. A there will be a winner decided. This actually happened, you know, male-like history. 1974, Buddy Baker, Kelly Yarbrough for third. In mm -hmm. Daytona, they couldn't decide who finished third, so it was a tie. They just split the third and fourth place points and third and fourth place money. Not what they're going to do today. With the, with the way it's laid out here, there's definitely a tiebreaker in place. They've got a process going forward.